Well, Nora's going to share with us some of the, the crabs. She's a crab biologist over at the Marine Station here in Charleston, the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology. What do you have for us, Nora? Well, I have one example of the commercially important crab on the West Coast, and that's the Dungeness crab. This is one example of a Dungeness. We'll see some more later. But the important thing about the Dungeness is that it's a real excellent transition between the ocean and the estuary. Because when the Dungeness crab um, reproduces, the female actually sheds her eggs and attaches them to the abdomen. Um, and then the eggs stay on the female's abdomen for a couple of months until they hatch out as tiny, almost microscopic forms called zoea. And these zoea are released out into the ocean and they're carried out into the ocean um, and they stay out there for a couple of months. And during that time, they molt about five times until they form a new stage called the megalopa, which is a little bit bigger. The megalopa comes back on inshore in the Oregon waters. And the megalopa then comes into the estuary looking for a place to settle. The megalopa settles down on these docks and the docks out in the boat basin and along the coast. I, um, we have a Great, we have a poster, a poster here, Nora, that we're going to use, I guess, and maybe these students can help us out. We have a, some students here again here from go. Sunset and Melcoma. So this is the stage that hatches out, the zoea stage, which then eventually grows into a megalopa, which is about this size. And then the megalopa metamorphoses into a juvenile Dungeness crab. Just like us, they have to get oxygen. And the way they get oxygen is not by using red blood like we have, but by using a blue blood. And you can bleed a crab using a needle and syringe in the soft part of its exoskeleton, one of these joints here. And when you bleed the crab, you find out that it actually has blue blood. I think, can you see that on screen there? Blue against the white paper. So they have blue blood, which contains copper. But this blue blood combines with oxygen and moves it from their gills into their body, the same way that our hemoglobin moves oxygen from our lungs into the rest of our body. Now, I want to just jump in with a question here. We have Nehalem Elementary in Nehalem, Oregon, a fifth grade class. And they ask, what species form the basis for your estuary food chain? Are crabs a part of that? Oh, crabs are definitely a part of that. The juvenile crabs, of course, feed on, on small of phytoplankton and detritus, and all of the larger crabs and the fish in the estuary and in the ocean feed on the juvenile crabs. So there is this, they're, they're part of the food chain from both ends, both as food and as feeders.